This is part two of how to block crash course in Brizzy Cloud. I'm JP here with Brizzy. And in this video, we're going to talk about custom fields within the blogging feature. Now I created this and you can go and watch part one. It's part of a playlist. And what I have here is a single post. Now I'm using some terminology that comes from WordPress. And actually we try to give you all the features you would like, and we're developing a bunch more as well. But we try to also encourage you to try and not, and I've said try now a few times, not to think like a WordPress user, come in with a fresh mind and understand how the builder works. One of these things that we constantly hear from WordPress is ACF, Advanced Custom Fields. And I'm going to show you how you can do that within Brizzy Cloud with the blogging feature. I just want to add a two cents there is that advanced custom fields are actually just custom fields. On this page, I have these images here that I brought in manually. Then I had this image, which is actually my featured image. Now, if I know that I'm going to be using this same structure for this specific block every time, I'm going to have these two images here then instead of every time coming to my page and changing them out manually, I can make them part of my post data or metadata. What we created in part one, and I jump into the builder here, is that I have these images in the background and you can see it's a normal image element and I brought them in as a image that I placed. What we will do now though, is we are going to make them dynamic. Let's go back into our CMS, go to our block, select that, and then I'll just work with the latest one, which is Laos, and select it. Once I select it, these are the fields that we have, and we have four fields. We have our post title, this slug, featured image, and the excerpt. These are the things that we can put in here in the back end, and they can be dynamically brought into the front end. What I want is to bring in those images, image left and image right, we can call them. Let me just show you image left and image right. And I would like to bring them in here and then they will automatically populate over here. For that, we have to go and work on the template of this post. And to do that, you go here to where it says all blog or whatever it says for your asset and click here on this configuration icon. Before I do that, I just use the word asset. In part three, we're going to go here to create custom asset. Now this block that you see here is actually an asset and you can create post types, custom post types. And I'm using a WordPress terminology again for people coming from WordPress. If you've never heard of that, I'll show you in part three, how you can create your own assets and how powerful that is. To configure it, let's click here then on the cog next to all block. And this is going to open up this area where we can add and remove fields. An interesting little snag that I just want you to pay attention to. I'm not going to change anything. Currently here on the left, it says block and all block. But you will note that actually the asset name is called post, post, and then the asset slug is block. If I click here on save and finish, and I've not changed anything, you'll note that now it's updated here to posts and all posts. So once you're going to change this, it's going to update there and it might confuse you like, hey, Bob, where did my blog go? It just renamed. Don't worry about that. I prefer actually the posts. So we go back here and you can see that here is the post post and then the asset slug. Over here, you have the asset icon. When we create our own custom asset in part three, you will see how this works. Scroll down and here are the four fields that we have when we created our blogs. We had the post title, the slug, and the featured image, an excerpt. When we get to part three, I'll show you more about this, which is reference or multi-reference. Below this is where you can bring in your own fields. Now I want to bring in an image on the left and an image on the right. All I need to do is Click here on image. It drops in a new field. Click on it anywhere and then select the image icon on the left. The label, I'm going to call it image left. And I can add a description here if I want. 
image on left side of block required yes and as i have updated that information you've seen that it also updates over here i also want to have the image on the right so again i'll go and select image here and i'll do the opposite i'll call this one image right and we give it the same description image on uh, no not the same right side of block and it is required as well click save and finish and now we have changed the template select all posts now since it's not all blog anymore and we go and edit laos select it and now below excerpt you see that we have the fields image left and image right click on add and now I just need to remember which image I used on the left, this one. Okay, so I click and drag that in. And we do the same for the one on the right. Look for our image on the right, which is travel two. And while we're here, do note that there is a selector within this image. Once you bring in an image dynamically, the selector will not appear within the builder. You need to set it over here. So I always want the house here in focus. I'll put that there. And here I always want the focus on the lady. So I'll put the selector there. I can also go and change this one whenever we use this also as a dynamic image on our page. Let's click on update. And now we go and edit the page within the builder. Select edit here in the bottom right. Let's scroll down and I think if we are here on Laos, is that the flag of Laos? I think that is Moldova's flag. I didn't switch that one out. Let's go and switch that quickly. And with that, I see another opportunity. I remember I switched it. I see another opportunity here where we can also bring in that as dynamic data. Now, these are still static images. Go to the image, select it, and then next to image, I can delete it. Let's go ahead and delete it so you can see it's cleared out. Next, select the dynamic data disks, and then you have the option of the featured image, image left, and image right. And I'll select custom. Up to you, you can use original as well. And look at that, same image comes in. Let's do the same for this, click on the image, let's delete it, dynamic, and we go to image right and select custom. And yesterday we had already done this with this one, and I had put that on featured image. Let's save, control S, command S, update, and preview it on the front end. Now there's absolutely no difference in how it views on the front end between the ones I showed you at the beginning with the static images we brought in and these dynamic images. It's going to display exactly the same. Many people prefer this way of adding placeholders as custom fields, whereas other people prefer to do it manually. Me, I'm a mix between the two. Let's close this, and now we look at the power of adding the custom fields. Go back to your CMS, go to our posts, and I'll go to Laos, and I will duplicate it. Work with Egypt this time, the slug is Egypt. I bring in a featured image here, where's Egypt? Egypt here is my hero. And I'll just set this on the swings, and then here, image on the left, Let's bring in this one. Okay. And then image on the right. Same thing. What is it without a camel? And I'll put it on the camel somewhere here. And I'll save my changes. I'm not going to worry about the excerpt at this moment. Now, let's go and edit the page. Because in part one, we had created our global headers and footers and page top and bottom and stuff like that. All of that is going to be there. Plus, because we had duplicated the page, we're going to get everything duplicated. But the difference is this dynamic data is now drawn in from the images we had put in the back. Again, all I need to do here is go and change out this content, the static content. Welcome to Cairo. Change out this one. And how quickly have we done that? Here is a caption that I've added. How about we also create a field for this caption? I'll just save it and I really encourage you to remember to save. We go to the CMS, 
go to posts and remember we are configuring it so next to all posts click on the configure icon let's click on a text and this is a small piece of text so i select text click on it let's change it to tagline uh no no caption what is this one caption i'll just caption placeholder caption and if you have many you're just going to add caption and then you can maximize the length of the characters i'll put on 250 and that's it save and finish then we go to all posts select egypt and that new field appears here and we say let's call it the places to see when visiting egypt and i'll update that now we go again to the builder we select edit scroll down over here where the caption is selected go to the t4 topography select the dynamic content and we look for caption there it appears i select caption and we may just have to style it out so i'll put it on light and then let's put it and it's a pity for some reason there is no italics the moment i use that we will need to put that as a feature request feature future feature future feature request and this way you can even bring in those dynamically no problem that is how you work with fields and to have a quick look at the rest of the field so you have an idea of the kind of data you can bring in we have text then we have rich text and the rich text is used here over with the excerpt now with the rich text editor you can already style out the text you can put in bullets there you can change colors however we are going to recommend that you don't use this for full content on your page if you have small parts go ahead do that but be careful it gets a little bit tricky at some points and the number one problem we encounter when people have problems with blogging in the cloud is because they want to put all their content in a rich text editor within a custom field it's better to do that manually you're not stopped from doing it in fact if you have very strict confined layouts this is the ideal place to do it then you have for emails links great way and links select and i'll show you how to use this in part three when we work with a custom asset image i've shown you there's number and then these two will also play again in part three that's basically creating your categories what's next is that in part three we will look at how you create a custom asset for a movie review site and then we will use many of these fields that i had not covered in this one so you can have an idea of how that works please give us a like if this crash course on the brizzy cloud blogging is useful and i'll see you then in the next video